Well, you guys got another PC build here for you. These are the parts I've chosen for this build. We have the Leon Lee Lancol uh, 2, which is the mesh case. We have the Dart Pro 4 uh, cooler. We have gone for the Gigabyte GeForce GTX 1660 Super, the Rog Strix B550 e Gaming uh, motherboard. Gone for a Western Digital Blue NVMe drive, uh, one terabyte and a 3600 AMD processor with an integrator 600 watt power supply and some RAM. So let's go ahead and get the motherboard out of the box. Now this is the bleeding edge of B550 motherboards. This is what you can expect uh, with this type of motherboard, proper quality motherboard. First off, what we're gonna do is remove these mounting brackets here. These are not needed for what we're gonna be using. So I'm going to actually remove these and keep these in the motherboard box in case I need them in the future. This is going to be the quick build video rather than the long version. If you want to see the long version, I will upload that video for you. Let me know in the comments section below. So let me remove this bracket here and get that out of the way. I'm going to need the processor here. Now this processor is the Ryzen 3600. This is going to be a great processor until the Ryzen 4000 series comes out and I can drop it straight into this motherboard. There is a little triangle on the corner here and also a little gold triangle on the CPU on the bottom here. You can see that here. All you need to do is pair those up together. Make sure the Ryzen writing is facing the IO shield area that way. Just put it into the slot, give it a little wiggle, make sure it's nice and flush. And then once you've got that done, you can literally just pull the retention lever down like that and lock it into position. Okay, so next up, what we want to do here is we're going to go ahead and insert the memory. This is the memory I chose here, Dominator Platinum, 32 gigabytes, but I did change it for some RGB memory in the end. So I'll show you that bit a little bit later on. And I also changed the cooler because it just didn't look right. It was too big. So I changed it for a smaller cooler. So that's why you're seeing some standoffs already in the board. I will remove those later on. So let's remove the little plate here to put in our M.2 NVMe drive. This is two little screws here. I'm just going to remove this. And this will give us access to the slot that we can put that drive in there. Okay, let's go ahead and put the standoff. On. Now this comes in a little bag in the motherboard box, so we just need to screw that in. And that's so we can mount the actual M.2 drive in there. Now, sometimes these are already uh, screwed to the motherboard, and sometimes they're in a little bag. It just depends on what board you buy. So I've got that in the right position here. All I need to do now is put in my drive. Now this is not the top end type of drive, so you can get Gen 4 drives, which I have got uh, for future builds. But this one is a pretty fast drive, probably about 2,500, 2,700 reads and writes. Pretty decent. I'm going to put the retaining screw in to hold it down. That's all we've got to do here. So just let me screw that down here. And this will hold this into position. They're pretty fiddly little screws. So you need a magnetic screwdriver to do this and make this a lot easier. Okay, time to put the cover plate back on. Now this does have a little thermal pad on the bottom, so you need to remove the protective uh, sticker on the bottom here. And uh, once I've done that, it'll give me access to the little uh, thermal pad on the bottom here. This will keep the drive nice and cool. So I'm just gonna put this into location, goes back exactly how it come off, and it's held on by two screws. So we'll just slot that back into position. And we can now screw that down easy as that so that's that job done so what we need to do now is think about putting the cooler on to the cpu and uh i chose a different cooler i did go with the dark rock pro 4 which was a massive cooler and it just didn't look right so i went with a smaller type of cooler which i think looks better and this is the cooler i decided to go for i went for the cooler master hyper 12 RGB black edition. Now this is the beauty of what I do. I can swap and change bits whenever I need to, but when you're buying your parts, you really want to take your time and make sure that you buy the right parts for your build. You can see it's a much smaller cooler than the Dark Rock Pro 4, which is an absolute monster. It was causing problems with the RAM and also the back 
shroud at the back where the IO shield is. And it just was too big for this uh, build. Anyway, I've got the back plate here. It says AMD. I'm going to put these little, little standoff screws here into the little uh, holes here and then make sure they're in the right position. And they've got a little retaining clip here that holds them into position so they don't move. It's a bit fiddly, but you just need to clip this on like so. Repeat this on all four corners. Make sure you choose the right one. Now this is for Intel and AMD, but I've got it set for AMD 4 in this location here. And this will then just slot into the back of the board and then we can put our nuts onto the actual screws there. So I'm just going to push these through the bottom of the motherboard. You'll notice that the back plate has been removed and I'm using the plastic back plate that comes with the cooler here. Okay, so that's now into position here. All I need to do is put on the little nuts here to hold this into position and they come in the kit as well so remember there are different types of bolts and screws and brackets that you have to use for AMD and Intel they're not clearly marked so you will need to look at the user manual so I'm just going to put four of these on I'll do them finger tight and it does come with a little tiny little tool here it's like a little nut that you actually put over the top and screw it to hold it into position Quite a nice little nifty little tool. It's not magnetic, but we can just put this over the top and give it a little turn until you feel some resistance there and then stop. Now remember, this is metal on plastic, so you don't want to over tighten these because you could cause yourself some problems. So just go around and tighten these up. Okay, so now time for the uh, bracket here. You can see here's a little gap missing here and a little ridge. They fit onto the cooler itself. And then you just flip it over and then just put one retaining screw to hold that into position. Very simple and easy to do here. And you just have to do that on both sides here. Let me put that screw in and uh, we'll get a screwdriver here. Probably best to use a smaller screwdriver, but I think this should do the job. And screw that down. And uh, basically once we've done that, we can tighten this up and we'll do the other side. And that's nice and tight. Don't over tighten these. And then all we need to do here is remove that sticker. I've seen so many people leave them stickers on, but this one is white to make it more easier to notice there is a sticker on there. So when they're clear, it's easy to leave those on. So we've got that removed. All I need to do now is put some thermal compound on. That does come in the kit here. So I'm just going to apply this to the CPU. And you can see how soft that was. That comes splurting out there. Uh, that should be all right. I'll use a glove to spread that across. I use a glove method on the Ryzen processors because of where the die sits on the actual chip itself. And I prefer to use the spread method for, for Ryzen processors. But for Intel, I normally just put a little dab in the middle and squish them down. Well, we spread that out and now we can offer up our CPU cooler. And again, it just goes in one way here with the writing saying Cooler Master facing you, and then just tighten down the screws. Now you will need to use a bit of force here to screw this down, and just use this diagonally. So tighten one bit, a little bit, and then tighten the other side off. So don't go tightening all the way down on one side because you'll run into difficulties trying to get this uh, screwed down. Again, I've got the tripod in the way here, so it does make it a bit more difficult. And you don't want to be using electrical screwdrivers on this particular type of screw here because you will cause yourself problems. Next, we're going to offer up the fan and clip this onto position. It just clips into place like so. And once that's done, all we need to do now is plug in our two cables, one for the power for the actual fan and one for the RGB display on the fan. So we need to plug both of those in. And that's all we need to do here. So let me flip the board around and plug in the CPU power cable into the board and then we can plug in our RGB into the board here as well. And there's two types of RGB. You've got the three pin and also the four pin. So this one is a four pin. So I need to find a four pin header on the board and plug that in. And it should be one up the top here, which I can utilize and plug in, which I'm going to do now. There's a certain way to go in. So make sure you get it the right way. Next up, we're going to put the RAM in. You can see I went with some RGB RAM. Now uh, the RGB fan is on there, so I might as well put some RGB RAM here. And this is 3600 speed, A data RAM. 
just going to slot this into slots one and three and you should put them in they only go in one way and then push them down until you hear a click and that should be in position there okay that's done so we've got that on and all i need to do now is move on to the next stage which is putting it into the case so just lift up by the cooler and slot that in we don't have to worry about the io shield because it's already onto the motherboard and just push this into position and line up the standoffs now the standoffs on here are already on the case in the right position if you haven't done that yet you need to check to make sure that they're in the right position and they're not going to touch the bottom of the motherboard this can ground out or short out the board so be very careful next i need to screw down the board and there's a bunch of screws here so i'm just going to put these in and screw these down not going to bore you with that so we'll just move on to the next stage which is the power supply the integrator 600 watt 80 watt bronze this is all i could get my hands on at the time when i bought these parts because parts were very scarce because of the climate we're in right now and it's not modular but at the price i got it for it was the cheapest i could find at the time so we got that in and what i need to do here is put in four screws very simple and easy to do these are clearly marked out you just put the four screws in and hold that into position i'm going to be using the electrical screwdriver here for the bigger screws just to save a bit of time and you just put this into position here now some people were concerned at over tightening these and stripping the screws and that is true that can happen but this has got a clutch on it and it basically stops the screw from going into tight it will basically get to a point and then it will just go click 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 which basically is the clutch kicking in and stopping you over tightening the screw so for all those people that like to think they know it all there's your answer so let's move on to the next step here once we've got this screwed in i'm going to be installing a few fans here one at the rear and this is going to be an rgb fan these are bit phoenix fans they're addressable rgb fans so i just need to thread the cables through now if you're going to be using rgb fans they do come with a lot more cables so you have to be prepared for a lot more cable management and again these are just held in with four screws i'll be putting two of these up the top as well also i need to do all the cabling here which is for 24 pin the USB 3.0, the audio, and the front panel connector cables as well. I need to put all those in, and I'll be doing those as well. Now, you won't be able to see much here because my hand's in the way, but they go in a certain way, and you can get that information from your user manual in your motherboard box. Okay, so next up, we need to put the graphics card. I'm just going to remove the two thumb screws. Make sure you check these that are in the right location because some cases you have to punch these out and there's no way of putting them back so if you punch the wrong ones out you're going to end up with a gaping hole there so just make sure that you check before you put those in but these are removable ones now the graphics card is a 1660 super it does need 8 pin power connector to it and of course all i need to do here is run that to the actual graphics card here and slot that in now I did find that this case has got a big metal strip down the 24 pin area here which actually hides the cables but I found it actually hinders the way you can cable manage here which made it look a little bit more messy in my personal opinion. So I'm just going to put two more fans in up the top here. This is just RGB fans and you can see the wadger cables here we need to sort those out and of course with this case it does have those back panels. I couldn't hide those other cables there. They were impossible to hide because obviously the way the cabling goes on this case. And that is the end result. It looks pretty nice and a pretty tidy little build. Cable management could do with a little bit more work there. That 24 pin and USB 3.0 cable is very annoying. I can't seem to get it to run flat down where that little cover is there. That's just the way the case is designed. And uh, it actually hindered me a little bit more, that little metal cover. But overall, I think it looks quite nice. If you're looking for a mesh case, then this sort of case does look pretty nice. And uh, with the RGB, you can change all the colors on the case as well. If you want to have it a static color, if you want to do that, or you can have it a rainbow effect, whatever you want to do with this uh, type of case. That's a square on 
side view here and you can see if you're not into RGB then you can always swap out these fans with non RGB fans or don't even buy this case and buy a different type of case that doesn't have RGB in it that's with the side glass panel on there and that is the end result for this now this machine will play all the games that you chuck at it probably one of the biggest games right now is Valorant and it plays this game no problem at all you should get over 300 frames per second with this particular graphics card on full settings and uh, you can see up the top left there it goes 250 to 300 it goes up and down and basically what you'll get here is a very nice gaming experience with this graphics card so this is a free game to play pretty awesome game i'm not going to go through loads of games you know by now that these will play pretty much all the games you chuck at it uh, it will play the witcher pubg um, fortnite also play warzone or any type of game you throw at it now the good thing about this system is it's upgradable you can put in a bigger graphics card you can change out uh, the CPU when the Ryzen 4000 series comes in it should slot straight into that V550 motherboard and you'll be ready to go so it's really a good sort of future proof if that's what you want to call it for the Ryzen 4000 series chips when they are released later on so pretty nice little uh, PC for someone who wants to get into PC gaming for the first time now I'll leave all the links in the video description for the PC hardware that I used there's no point me putting a total of the price because that's going to vary from person to person you would just change the graphics card or you would just change the cpu and that would change the whole structure of this pc build but with that said i think that's going to be about it for this video my name has been brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk hope you enjoyed it guys i will upload the full length video as well so you can watch that one if you wish bye for now now if you haven't subscribed yet hit the red subscribe button and hit the bell notification button and click all to be notified when we upload new videos.